Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios having a CUBE conversation. We have an itty bitty little break in the middle of this crazy conference season. Next week, we're back on the road and one of the places we're going is UiPath Forward Americas. It's our first time to the UiPath a user conference. They're all about the RPA, robotic process automation, which is a super hot space. And we're really excited to have with us today, Carl Eschenbach, he's a partner at Sequoia Capital, who just came in on UiPath's latest round of funding, which was pretty significant. You can read all about it in the papers, as they say. So we're excited to have Carl here. Carl, great to see you again. Great to be here, thanks for having me, Jeff. Absolutely, so we of course <laughs> known you for years and years and years. You had a long, illustrious career at VMware. You've been in the VC world at Sequoia for a couple of years, so how are you liking the transition to VC? I've really enjoyed it. Um, I had a great, you know, many year run, almost 15 years at VMware, I was thankful for, but the transition to Sequoia, I don't think it could have gone any better. I've really enjoyed it, and to be working at Sequoia with just a tremendous uh, platform behind you, uh, with 45 years of rich history is, is just a privilege. And leveraging my operating experience of 29 years, now putting it to work uh, through the uh, Sequoia brand, has been pretty exciting for me. Well, I'm very been, thankful. It's been a pretty good run for former VMware guys in VC. You know, Jerry Chin is on all the time from Greylock. There's, yeah. there's a number of you guys out there. So. Yeah, there's a number. I think Jerry, I think Steve Harrods That's now. Steve uh, Harrod. You know, Martin Casado, who was the uh, founder of Nicira that we bought at VMware as a VC. So it's, uh, there's a bunch of people who have proliferated the VC market. Um, but none of them got the opportunity to be a Sequoia like I did, so I feel very privileged. <laughs> and it really, it really points to the opportunity, the continued innovation opportunity in the enterprise space, because you're obviously, you're not investing in, in dating apps or autonomous vehicles, maybe autonomous vehicles, I don't know, but it's really more the enterprise opportunity continues to just be rich with new kind of transformative opportunities. Yeah, I think that's right. I spend the majority of my time, as you could imagine, in the enterprise. That's where I grew up and my operating experience is all in the enterprise, deep infrastructure. So I leverage that experience here at Sequoia, focusing on the enterprise, uh, both infrastructure, hardware, software, public, private cloud, SaaS, so anything associated with offerings in the enterprise is where I focus, and I'll tell you, over the last few years, it's been a really rich environment for an investor to think about what's happening in the enterprise as people still are looking for technologies that transforms their business at such a rapid rate, both on-premise and obviously with the cloud environment. It's not if, it's when and how fast people ultimately move into the cloud. Right, it just it fascinates me how we continue to uncover these huge buckets of inefficiency. I mean, do you think, I used to tease my friends at Accenture, tease them that you guys rang every, all the fat out of supply chain, now everything's on backward all the time. Yeah. But we still find huge chunks of inefficiency and huge opportunities to get more value out, which is, you know, I think one of the fundamental differences in this kind of stock run up and, and this productivity, it's real. It's not just smoke and mirrors. There are huge still opportunities. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, listen, there are huge opportunities to drive gains in productivity. One of the things we're going to talk about is RPA, for example, right? How do you automate your enterprise to move towards a digitized world? And by doing that, you become more automated, which just drives your productivity or people that much higher. So. I think with the uh, you know, ever increasing use of AI and machine learning, getting deeper, deeper integrated into um, enterprise solutions, it makes things that much more automated, which impacts the productivity of your people, which hopefully has great returns on both your top line growth and bottom line savings. Right, so let's dig into that, because business <clears throat> process automation has been around for a long time. I, I was teasing about a century, you know, you bring them in and they spend a lot of time, yeah. and they map a bunch of stuff out and they change a lot of things. RPA, robotic process automation, which is a relatively new term, I didn't hear about it till relatively recently, is a very different approach to automation than just than hiring in all the consultants. It's about actually letting machines learn, listen, mm. and start to build those new processes. Yeah, if you think about the BPO world, right? BPO it was still and is still a very manual, human intensive activity. To your point, you bring on all these people, you do an outsource, and then, but there's still someone there, you know, doing data entry and doing very um, mundane, kind of easy work, um, but it's all human driven. And people used to try to solve this by going to offshore locations with lower cost you know, opportunities where you can get a workforce that's much cheaper than here in the States. But again, it was all human driven. Right. Now with the advent of something like RPA, that can be substituted with software and software bots or robots. And by doing that, it just drives up the efficiency at which you're doing everything uh, you know, in your older system. So 
That's why we've seen such a rapid acceleration that you can't ignore around RPA. Just over the last couple of years, right. this has accelerated extremely quickly. The technology's become a lot more mature. Um, people are starting to implement it. It's one of the first instantiations of you know, AI in the enterprise. And if you think about it, Jeff, implementing a software bot that may replace you know, three, four, five humans uh, and oh, by the way, the bot can work 24 hours a day. Right. Oh, by the way, the accuracy rate of the bot is probably significantly higher than the human. So the ROI and the value proposition around RPA is very straightforward. You can't ignore the value it brings. And everyone, as you know, is always looking to save costs, but it does more than just save costs. It actually be, starts to impact your top line revenue growth, but you, because you can take those humans who used to do those mundane tasks and you can repurpose them to work on, if you will, revenue generating profitable activities while the software bots take care of all the, all the automation of your older legacy systems. Right, and it's even, not even, it's, it's little things, right? I'm, I'm never amazed, right? I do a ton of interviews, we talk yeah. about automation all the time. I still do a whole lot of manual stuff, yeah. right? That I would much rather have my robotic assistant help me do simple things like, <laughs> you know, make sure that we get the picture out from this interview, yeah. you know, after the fact. All these little mundane tasks that, the sum total of which are, are a lot of activity. And then as you said, I think the other really important piece is accuracy, right? When you, unfortunately with computers, or fortunately they only like to do it the way they get set up to do it. They're not really good at error yeah. so much. So once you set it up, but you know, this RPA is different in that, in that the people aren't doing it, they're actually letting the robots do it. So, I mean, yeah. VMware early days of virtualization, now we're getting to the point where the compute uh, the store and the network are to a point where you get the horsepower to support this type of functionality. Yes. You didn't have yes. it in the past. Yeah. Yep. yeah, and with RPA, I think one of the things that's pretty neat is people are starting to implement RPA and they're always finding new use cases for it. And once they get some experience in programming these software bots, right, they start to realize, well, maybe we can implement this in this other area. So it may start in a finance organization and it may move into, you know, uh, automating call centers or automating what you're doing, you know, in sales or sales operations. So there's there's many of opportunities once it's implemented once to find other use cases. Um, and actually you're starting to see people become software bot developers. Like they have to set up these bots to implement them in their environment. So people have to learn how to program these bots and then implement them. So there's an ecosystem that's starting to be established around the RPA industry. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the, you know, the Accentures of the world or the old BPOs. They're some of the biggest customers of people like UiPath because what they do is they say, wow, today we're solving this with humans, but if I can solve this now with software and RPA and technology like you know, UiPath, UiPath is providing, I can drive up my margins because I'm doing it through the use of software and I can per repurpose those people to do other tasks. Right. So great point, you brought up UiPath and so we started with, um, what did you see as, as an investor, as an executive <clears throat> in UiPath, both the technology and the team and their execution that, that led you guys to go in on this big round? Yeah, so we, um, we did a, a pretty deep dive across the entire RPA landscape. Listen, you couldn't ignore the momentum, right? We say don't fight, fight gravity. Yeah. We saw the momentum of the RPA market accelerating. And you know, the way I like to describe it, it went from a push market where people have to push their technology into the enterprise to now it's a pull market where the enterprise is pulling the technology and now they're looking for the best solution. So we recognize the growth in the RPA market, to your point, just in the last two or three years, right. it's really accelerated. And then as we looked at the landscape, we had the opportunity to spend time with Daniel, uh, this co, you know, the co-founder and CEO. And I think there was a, you know, a few things that stood out to us around U UiPath. Number one, Daniel is a very unique you know, founder. He's been at this for years, and his level of perseverance and commitment to make this a very successful company is unwavering. Um, the fact that they're global in nature already, this is a company who started in Bucharest, expanded internationally, and expanded to the U.S. simultaneously, so they're covering the three major geographies around the world already today, even at an early stage of the company. Um, which is very, very important for someone when you're an investor to say, wow, what's your global footprint? Do we have to help them get into these markets? Today, they're established they're around the world. There. They're in Japan, they're across Europe because where they originated, they have a new headquarters in, in New York uh, and they're hiring rapidly. 
The second is we think their technology that exists today in the roadmap where they're going in the future um, was very powerful and they're going to continue to implement more and more, if you will, AI into their platform. The other thing that we were impressed with was the fact that they are customer uh, focused. They're very customer centric and they've built a global footprint to support their global customers. Um, and they've had to do that because of the rapid acceleration of the product. I think they're getting like six new enterprise customers a day wow. uh, uh, on the UiPath platform. And if you're going to do that in a global footprint, you have to have support around the world. And they're maniacal about how they support their customers. Um, so all of this led you know, to us looking at the market, recognizing the RPA growth and saying UiPath is the company we want to bet on. And we couldn't be more excited uh, to be part of the, the company and to help them on their journey as they continue to grow. Yeah, well, we're excited to go to our first UiPath Americas oh, Ford. Ford Americas, I got week? it. Yeah. Right. yeah, we'll be there next week. It's in uh, the Fontainebleau uh, Hotel in, in Miami, and, yeah. and, and we're looking forward. Because, like you said, it, came, it, it seemed to come out of nowhere, but it's <laughs> typically is the case, right? Always an overnight success, 10 years in the making. Yeah. They have late conferences to they've been doing around the world, Jeff, UiPath, and uh, Every conference they do, including Japan, it's like a standing room only um, because there is so much interest in this technology. And again, I think anything associated with automating your infrastructure, moving to a new digitalized world, and everyone has a, you know, a digital strategy, you know, first kind of mentality in the enterprise, you know, these, these people fit right in smack in the middle of that. Yeah, well clearly the valuation speaks to that uh, as market validation, so yeah. we're no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, Carl, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. Glad to hear the VC life is treating you well. And, well, thanks uh, for having me. It's <laughs> good to see you guys again back here on theCUBE. It's always fun spending time with you. And thanks for your interest in UiPath and, and RPA. I think it's a really exciting market. And I'm quite confident we'll continue to accelerate at unprecedented rates. All right. Well, great. Well, thanks a lot, Carl. He's Carl. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're having a CUBE conversation in our Palo Alto studio. Taking a break from the conference season, but we'll be heading back on the road soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.